update. Am I the a-hole for leading a woman on by being nice to her kid? Original post. This happened a few days ago. It has completely blown up in my face. I male 32 was out with friends. And it was one of those situations where people showed up with their friends. And it was a blend of different friend groups. It was a courtyard cafe, so our tables were close by. And we were all occupying a good chunk of the place. I don't make new friends easily, so I was just focusing on my coffee and talking to my friend Katya, female 35, when a friend Marie, female 30, joined our table with her colleague. She's a cute woman with smart looks and a brilliant smile. We started talking, and it was your usual what's her favorite kind of topic. We were discussing cartoons, movies, and books. Apparently, we are both dorks who hide our dork in us really well. Then, something unique happened. We recognized that we had an audience. Katya and Marie's colleagues were busy with themselves, but there was a young boy sitting with us listening to our conversation, and we noticed him when he chimed in with his own favorite show, Steven's Universe. At first, we looked at each other and then a kid, and then again at each other and left. It was so interesting that he had pushed his chair from the adjacent table to our table and decided to join our conversation. So we started talking to him and asked him about his life, friends and school, typical stuff. I saw his mother smile at us from the table, so she approved of all this. She was a friend of one of my friends and remained busy with her group. Over the next hour, we basically talked to each other and a kid, and Marie slid her chair a bit closer to me, and we were subtly flirting with each other. When it was time to leave, we exchanged contacts and decided to meet again the next day to see where things go. We are both single and share many interests. The kid's mom, let's call her Brianna, came over and we just exchanged some pleasant greetings. She described how great the kid was, and we all agreed. We all went our separate ways. I did give Marie a hug before leaving. The next day, I got a message from one of my friends saying how rude I was to Brianna, and that if I was not interested in her, I should not have gotten her hopes up. I was surprised because Brianna and I did not talk for more than 15 minutes, and I never showed any interest in her. I did not flirt it, and I did not notice if she was flirting either. Not surprising, because that is one of my blind spots. I replied that I did not know what this was about, but I definitely did no such thing. I had plans with Marie that evening, so I kind of forgot about this, and hoped that it would resolve on its own. I went out with her and biked together to her home, common in the Netherlands, and by the time I reached my place, I noticed that I had strings of messages on my phone. Brianna had gotten my contact from my friend, and was saying that I was an a-hole for being a father of figure to her son. She said that he had not stopped talking about how nice his evening was with me and how is she supposed to tell him that I had no interest in being in his life. I was leading her on by showing her that I could offer what she was looking for, but then I was playing this game of showing disinterest to make her follow me around as a show for dominance. Apparently, all the podcasts have chewed men into a-holes, and we don't see women as people with emotions anymore. I was literally sitting there with my hand in my forehead trying to make sense of it. Our mutual friend messaged me again and said that she expected better from me. She had found out from Katya that me and Marie had hit it off, and she accused me of being superficial and being a jerk to Brianna because she is a single mother and I should grow up and be more mature. I replied that I never let her run and they needed to clear this out because it sounded really crazy. To be honest, I have never been interested in dating someone with a child, and my friends know this. But I never said that to Brianna, so that was something our mutual friend either told her or was just saying to me personally. The next day, it blew up even more, with half of our friend group calling me a jerk for stringing Brianna around. I messaged Katya and asked her what the heck was going on, and she said that she was surprised too. I'd assumed that something happened after we left, and was under the impression that I asked Brianna out and rejected her. I told her that I asked Marie out, not Brianna. I am seriously thinking I have crossed some boundary here by talking to that kid that day, and probably his mom is freaking out because of it. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not the a-hole. You were just nice to a kid. Doesn't mean you have to go marry his mom. Also, kinda sounds like mom is using the poor kid as a litmus test for dating. Friend group or not, I wouldn't really be okay with my kid just pulling a chair up to strangers and engaging in their conversation, because it's rude. And even if I did think that was okay, I wouldn't think that it automatically meant he was attempting to be a father of figure of any kind. People in general aren't nasty and dismissive of kids, but especially not if they're part of an extended friend group. Is any man the kid smiles at a potential suitor? I think you may have dodged a bullet and may need to keep the people agreeing with her at arm's length. Not a litmus test, more like a bait. 
throwing the kid out on a line and see what he catches. Not the a-hole. I think the mother was using her kid to get to you, and the plan failed, so she could be trying to guilt you into exchanging numbers by using her son, which is coming. Sounds like it. Opie needs to talk to some folks in person, find out what story's going around. He was obviously talking to Marie, and obviously Brianna's upset that OP was interested in Marie rather than herself. This is a really weird revenge mission for Brianna. The mutual friends being flying monkeys is the most disturbing part. If Brianna's crazy, that's fine, but mutual friends whipping up a mob is bad news. Discussing it in person is the best solution. Find out what story is going around. Brianna sounds unhinged and I'd be interested to know exactly what she told his friend group, because it had to be more than, he was nice to my kid, and we chatted for 15 minutes between the hour plus his pet flirting with Marie. Let them know you and Marie were both nice to the kid, who invited himself into your conversation. That doesn't mean that Brianna can expect a three or a father for a child out of it. Definitely block Brianna. But if the friends don't remove their heads from Brianna's butt and offer you an apology, I start blocking and ignoring them too. I can just see this nut job with her eyes peeled, looking for potential daddies from any guy with a mile radius of her kid. Not a hole. Now for the update. Important background is that I am not Dutch. I'm an expat, and so is Brian and Ellen. Marie's Dutch, and so is our friend Katya. Some good Dutch people commented and were surprised how this could happen in Netherlands. And they are right. Dutch people are one of the most straightforward people I have ever met. I asked Katya to find out exactly why people think that I led Brianna on, because she was also under that impression. She contacted a few people and got the whole story, and it is crazy AF. The whole thing started a few months ago and was the brainchild of Ellen. I was coming out of her relationship, and she wanted to hook me up with Brianna from the start. I, however, was not ready to jump in and was not very social for the first few months, so the chance never came. Brianna and I have shared talks before, but I was not paying attention, and she never registered in my brain. Ellen had hyped me up to Brianna for quite some time, and that is where the whole issue started. She had her convinced that we are very compatible and share similar interests. She was convinced that if we could just have a chance, we would immediately click. I have no idea why she thinks that, because we are definitely not alike in any way. Not to mention she knows that I don't want to date someone with the responsibility of a child. She just thought that I would rise up, because I am so good with kids. This brings us to the day we were all out, and I met Marie. Katya too had similar designs, but she did not oversell me and just bought her along for a nice evening. All this time, Ellen and her group wanted to introduce Brianna to me, but the way I clicked with Marie, they knew they missed the bus. So they sent her kid to our table in hopes of derailing our conversation, because we cannot flirt if there is a kid sitting with us. It was another matter that ended up helping us even more because his presence removed any first-time nervousness and we went from verbal flirting to non-verbal. When Brianna came later, she hoped to use the kid as an icebreaker and we had a chat about how cute kids can be and some her stuff. But I never asked for her number and she left with Ellen not so happy. My hug to Marie pretty much took them off. I do not know if it was Ellen's idea or Brianna's, but they decided that if they could malign me in the group and assassinate my character, they might end up drawing a gap between me and Marie. So they made up a story that I asked Brianna out and showed her down for being a single mother and how she has nothing good to offer anymore because women lose their value to men when they are a single mother. This is why they mentioned the podcasts and stuff. Since Marie also has friends in my group, she would find out, be disgusted by me and dump me. How do we know? One of the people sitting at their table dumped all their beans on Katya. What they did not expect was that I would be quick to ask Marie out and meet her the very next day. So when the whole thing blew up, she messaged me the day after we had a date. I already knew something made no sense. Katya and I explained everything to her and she was very supportive and joked that she has to work so hard to get this misogyny out of me. We created a group chat and showed our friends some pics from our time together the next day. And the whole thing was cleared up. Brianna and Ellen are outcasts now. And apart from professional relations and people will need to keep with them, they will no longer be invited to our usual hangouts. Everyone is scratching their head at what their endgame was. And the consensus is that they expected to isolate me and then be my only support system and redemption. Anyway, the only petty thing Katya did at the end was add my pick kissing Marie on her cheek to Ellen as an FU before blocking her. Unless there is a new drama from the two, which I doubt there will be, this is probably the end of all the craziness. Well, that was weird. 
honestly don't know what to say really, but what a dumpster of fire. Some of these people really just make me scratch my head. Are people really this naive and deranged? I can't believe it. I feel bad for OP having to deal with this nonsense. But I also do feel bad for the kid, because he was a pawn in this whole thing. Poor kid is getting mixed up with a group of deranged people. My guess is desperation. Desperation feeds on itself and can often bring out the worst of people. If Brianna was becoming desperate for a relationship, every rejection would feed desperation back and feel like she had no more chance. And when you feel you have no sane option to pursue, you go for the insane one. What a pair of deranged idiots. Their master plan was to manipulate him into a relationship by slandering him, isolating him from the friends, and waiting to pick up the pieces of his decimated and lonely existence? That sounds like a freaking delightful start to a new relationship. This is a plot reminiscent of the parent trap. Did a kid concoct this insanity? Because it's otherwise inexplicable coming from two grown women. It makes me believe that Brianna had a child in an attempt to baby trap someone, and this is just her M.O. Thank goodness it got cleared up. If Opie didn't just not want to date women with kids, making this whole thing pointless from the get-go, the plan could have worked if they didn't go about it in the dumbest way possible. The friends should have been directing all their vitriol towards the other woman, and a single mom should have stayed out of things entirely while they assassinated the other girl's character. Then, when the other girl ran for the hills, or Opie decided he didn't like the person the friends were portraying her to be, the friends could mention that a single mom had said she felt like the two of them had a connection, and encourage Opie to reach out to her. Revealing that the single mom was a crazy witch who was willing to insult and harass him in an effort to force him to date her was a massive misplay, and it guarantees that there is zero chance for the two of them to ever get together. When you are trying to manipulate someone, you never lead with your massive red flags. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my husband he needs to draw clear lines with the mother of his child? My husband has a daughter from a previous relationship. For context, she's a five-year-old. Prior to us getting married, my husband and his ex-girlfriend had what seemed like a well-oiled machine when it came to co-parenting their daughter. I've always said I wouldn't date men with children, and I don't have any children of my own yet because I didn't want that extra baggage. But to be honest, it was their co-parenting relationship that passed my mind at ease to become comfortable with the idea of becoming serious about him. I love my husband and his daughter dearly. However, her mother is slowly becoming a pain in my neck. Prior to me being in the picture, all expenses for their daughter have been split 50-50. There were no problems besides the little oddball expenses here and there that my husband had to cover 100%. Again, nothing major. It all started over the summer. My husband's ex-girlfriend wanted to go out of the country for a two-week trip, and she asked my husband if he could pay for their daughter 100%. At first, he promised that he would, but then it dawned on him that she has been pulling this kind of stunt for a few months now, where all of a sudden she's unable to pay for her portion of their daughter's expenses. I then told her that he will pay for half, as they've both been doing for years. I don't think she was too happy with that, but they went on their trip in summer, and all seemed to be well until it was time for school. She told him that she will not be able to pay for half of their daughter's tuition as she's been doing, along with her portion of the household expenses for the home that she shares with her daughter, which essentially means that he is going to be expected to fill the gap. As a result of all that's happening, my husband said that now would it be the best time for us to start our own family, as he would be stretched too thin financially. We have been talking about having a baby for the past few months, and we're about to start trying. Quite frankly, I'm mad that we have to put starting our family on hold due to his ex not being able to pull her weight financially. Am I the a-hole for telling him that he needs to draw clear lines, that his responsibility is his daughter alone and his ex needs to figure out her stuff and start pulling her financial weight again like she's been doing? Now for the comments. Not the a-hole. She suddenly can't pay for childcare expenses right after a two-week international vacation? Ex-girlfriend has decided to try to squeeze as much money as she can get out of your husband. Pretty much. Guess she figures new wife will help foot the bills for her child now. Of course you're not the a-hole. Better nip this in the bud and make sure it is working before you get pregnant. Don't assume. If she does it once or twice, it will be forever. Maybe you are correct in not wanting to marry someone with kids. Not the a-hole. But they need a formal agreement as to parenting and payment of expenses. If she can't afford the school the child has been going to, then the child can go to public school. He should not be paying for her vacations with mom. 
that is for mom to pay for, or she can leave the child home with him while she goes. This isn't a draw clear lines, it is get a formal agreement and hold her to it. If she can't pay her half of the home, then sell the home and she can figure out her place to live. This comment, not the a-hole. My stepson has bounced between our house and his mother's house a couple of times. I know occasion was either household responsible for paying for the other's vacations, household costs, etc. Child support is there to support the child in daily living needs. If the mother can't afford her house, she needs to downgrade her cell. If she can't afford her half of his school tuition, then the kid can go to public school, or a cheaper alternative that she can afford. If she can't afford a vacation out of her own pocket, then the kid stays with the other parent, or they make different plans that she can afford. Her husband is being taken advantage of, and she's pushing him for all he'll give. I had an ex, and his ex said she needed more child support because her and her boyfriend's rent went up. Of course, he agreed, and I was like, so if you get a new place and your rent goes up, does that mean you can give her less? It was more things like that. The relationship didn't last. Poor guy was such a pushover that he couldn't clearly see it, or he didn't want to, 